Let me get my um. Let me get my remote. Peter Quillen just got knocked out in the first round. I'm sure this isn't what you were expecting. So, what caught him to put you in this position to put Quillen away so soon? Well, first of all, I'd like to give the glory to the men above. Uh, oh, hey, man. I mean, God. Thank you to Peter Quillen for giving me the opportunity to bless this ring with him. He's a fine gentleman. I respect him to the utmost. I hope he's okay. And all we can do is pray for him for the future. But back to your question. I told you, speed kills, talent, and skill. I was patient. I knew he was going to come in with bombs, and I was able to slip some of his punches. And when I came with an upper shot, I realized I hurt him, and that's when I went for the kill. Daniel, you spoke to him extensively. First of all, what did you say? Because it was quite lengthy. I told him I love him. He's a brother of mine. He's fighting for the same reasons I'm fighting for. We and Peter Quillen go back since the Golden Glove days. I have nothing but the utmost respect for him and his family. I love him to death. But I knew that this night would be my night. Do you feel this was domination, or did you just catch him unexpectedly? Um, I don't think in boxing there's any, there isn't anything unexpected. Everything is intentional. There's no lucky shots. It's just setting up shots. And obviously, I caught him with a shot. Maybe on the tip line, I don't know what shot I caught him with, but I knew once I had him hurt, I wanted to go out there and, and corral him and uh, hopefully let the referee stop the fight. Daniel, let's take a look at this monitor right All here. All right. We're going to stop it right there. Listen, um, if I would have predicted that... I mean, I, I couldn't have predicted that Danny Jacobs would knock out of Peter Quillen in the first round. Um, Peter Quillen, at one point in time, it was the question of why didn't he hold? Peter Quillen got hit with some, you know, he was getting hit with some bombs. And it seems as though every time he tried to reach out to hold, Danny Jacobs would just tag him. But the question is, should the referee had given Peter Quillen a standing A count? I'm looking at the referee. I'm looking at it right now in slow motion. And Peter Quillen was out of it on his feet. So you got to think Danny Jacobs, even though they're friends, would have probably went in and just knocked Peter Quillen out even worse than the stoppage. So I'm actually all for the stoppage. I don't think that it was early. I don't think that uh, Peter Quillen would have recovered. He didn't recover from the first right hand that got him into all this mess. And man, I'm actually... um. It's hard because you have to give all the credit to Danny Jacobs for getting a win. But you have to also think, well, what does this really do for his career? I mean, you got a devastating knockout. Let's hear what Peter Quillen has to say. Yeah, so, so I, yeah, I feel good. You know, this is what happened in the game of boxing. You go up in there with the ability. You go up in there with all the strength. You go up in there that things, thinking things are going to happen for you. But it sometimes come up short like that. If you can recall the moment, do you know where you were when the referee stopped the fight, or did he do the right thing? Of course I was. You know, I seen earlier I was connecting with Jabs. He was throwing me. It was kind of tentative. We wasn't engaging. And I didn't see him connect with any Jabs. Very explosive. All right, as we take a look at the end of the fight, Peter, tell us if you could assess just exactly what was happening with you and were you just trying to survive this onslaught? That's right on the temple. Well, you know, in a moment, you and his whole facial expression and everything, he was out of it. He, he dude was dude was out of it, you know. And now the question is, where does Danny Jacobs go from here? Um, Eddie Hearn, a British promoter, the promoter that promotes Kell Brook, Anthony Joshua, um, has a fighter by the name of Chris Eubank Jr., who's taking on a fighter by the name of uh, Gary Spike O'Sullivan next week, December the 12th. And the winner of that is supposed to be in line to fight Danny Jacobs next now that Danny Jacobs has won the fight. But the question I have now is Peter Quillen, in my opinion, from what I've been getting from it, was the favorite to win this fight. And now it's like, where does he go from here? You know, he's already has a tough, you know, he already had a tough career, especially since fans have been riding him for um, dropping his belt. And people have been saying, well, what if you lose? And now this was the other championship that he had a chance to get his hands on. And, you know, he lost. And remember, this is uh, this is his second straight. Um, this is his second title fight this year. He fought Andy Lee and then he fought um, Zarafa and now he's fighting uh, Danny Jacobs. So it's like, where does he go now from here to get a title shot? You know, so it's tough. Maybe he moves to 168. You know, maybe, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but congratulations to Danny Jacobs. It's interesting to see where he goes from here now. 
And um, I think Danny Jacobs could possibly beat a um, <coughs> a Chris Eubank Jr. I know he can beat a Gary Spike O'Sullivan, but does he try to go for? I mean, does he try to go for Golovkin? I want to start hearing what he has to say about Golovkin. I want to start hearing what Danny Jacobs has to say about possibly fighting Golovkin in the future. I mean, after all, the WBA could easily order him to fight. You know, for example, the WBA has been ordering their world champions to fight their super world champions. Golovkin is the WBA super world champion, which is considered the WBA champion. Danny Jacobs is the WBA world champion. But as of late, the WBA has been ordering... Um, their world champions to fight their super world champions. So if they want Golovkin to really unify, you know, the division and be undisputed, then why not have him, you know, go after, um, even though there's the Canelo situation, why not have him in the future go after Danny Jacobs? I don't know. That fight can happen in the end of 2016, depending on if Danny Jacobs keeps winning or not. And this was a big win for his career in, in so many, in, in, in so many ways, shapes and forms, because, Nobody thought he would win like this. And when I saw that he first hurt Peter Quill, I was like, oh, shit, because I was laying down. And I got up. I'm thinking like, yo, is he really going to knock Peter Quill out? Because going into the fight, I'm thinking to myself, these guys are friends. You know, you know, they even talked about how they were brothers and everything like that. I'm thinking like, are these guys going to go out there and actually go for a boxing match and not really try to go out there to hurt one another? But. Danny Jacobs had bad intentions. He was really out there trying to knock out Peter Quillen, and as he did. I'm um, T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.